Today we're going to talk about something that drives me nuts in video games, and probably drives your players nuts too. It's not the fact that I lost and just got my butt kicked. Nope, it's the extremely loud background music that you'll hear as soon as I give the game some focus. Now luckily this game's got a way to fix that. I can go into my audio settings and adjust music, sound effects, or even the master volume independently. And if your game doesn't give players the same level of control, you're probably going to end up with at least a couple really angry ones or players that crank the volume all the way down and never hear anything that you wanted them to. Luckily, with the latest versions of Unity, hooking up some sliders to control audio levels has never been easier. So today I'll give you the quick steps that you can follow to add in a slider for music and sound effects volume controls or any other volume control that you want or really anything that you want to do to adjust the audio setup. We'll set up a way to persist this so that your player gets the same volume when they stop playing and when they restart. And we'll even add in a little mute toggle so they can turn the volume off or turn it all the way on. And once I finish teaching you how to implement this in your own game, I'll give you the art and the code to go along with it. And all I ask in return is that you please hit that thumbs up button or just leave a comment and let me know what other kinds of things you're interested in learning about. Here we have a new project. I've imported in the art that I'm going to use and give you at the end of this video and two audio clips that are background music that I'll link down below. I also created this slider here and reskinned it, but I haven't made any other changes. Now let's add some music to the game. I'll go to game object, create an empty one, name it music. And then I'm just going to take this battle theme A and drop it right on there. I can hit the loop button. And if I hit play now, I'll just hear the music constantly playing. And this is what a lot of people end up with as like the end of their music system. Obviously overwhelming. And then they end up muting it constantly. So how do we make it so we can adjust this? The first step is actually going to be to add in an audio mixer. If you've never used audio mixers before, you're in for a treat. They're really easy to use and extremely powerful. To create an audio mixer, go to Window, Audio, and then choose Audio Mixer. It'll pop open the Audio Mixer window. You can hit the plus button to create a new mixer and then give it a name. I like to name mine Main just because I feel like that's a nice default name. When we create the audio mixer, we'll automatically get an audio mixer group created named Master. This is our master volume level. I can click on it to see the volume is set to zero and I can slide it up and down to adjust the volume in game. But if I hit play and drag it up and down with my edit and play mode option on, it doesn't actually do anything yet. The reason for that is that I haven't selected an output for my audio source. I need to go to the music object, find the audio source, and then I'll just drag my master group over to the output, hit play, and I should have control over the audio from this mixer. Of course, that's not an option for our players. We need to hook up our in-game slider to adjust this level. To do that, we first need to expose the volume parameter of our audio mixer to our code. We can do that by selecting the master mixer group and then right-clicking on the volume property here and choose expose volume of master to script. That'll create a new exposed parameter that you'll see down below here. I've got one exposed parameter. I can click on the list to see them all and then I can double-click here to rename it. I'm going to rename this to master volume with a capital M and a capital V. And now it's time to hook it up to our slider. If I select the slider and scroll down a little bit, you'll see that we have an on value changed event. This fires off whenever the value of the slider is adjusted. So as our user or player drags the slider to the left or the right, this event's going to fire off with the new value. We need to hook into that and then pass that value along somehow to the audio mixer. Luckily, we can do this with one very simple script. We'll create a new script on our slider by hitting add component and then choosing new script and I'm going to name this volume control. We'll open up that script. Our volume control script will need three serialized fields. The first is a volume parameter so that we can adjust which mixer group we're controlling. Right now we only have the single master group but we do want to be able to control music and sound effects independently. To set that parameter, we're going to need a reference to the audio mixer. So we'll add the audio mixer here and then add in the using statement that it needs, the using Unity Engine audio. The last field we'll need is a reference to our slider. So I'll add in a slider reference and add in the using statement for that as well. We need to make sure that we use the Unity Engine.UI.slider for this example though. Before we write any more code though, we're going to hook up our references. So I'll go take my slider and drag that into the slider field. And then for my mixer, I'm going to go to my main project view and in the root, I have my main mixer that was created. I'll drag that in here as well. You can't drag the mixer group if that's what you're looking for. Make sure you go to the project and find the mixer that was created. 
With those hooked up, we'll jump back into code and start hooking things up. We're gonna begin by creating an awake method. So I'll add an awake. And then inside the awake method, I want to register for the sliders value changed method. So we'll say underscore slider dot on value change dot add listener. And here we can give it a method to call whenever the value has changed. I'm going to name that method handle slider value changed. And then I'll hit alt enter and generate the method for it. That'll create a method right below that takes a floating point argument. That's the value of our slider. So I'll rename this to value for our implementation we'll say underscore mixer dot set float and then we need to give it our parameter name so we'll say underscore volume parameter and then here i could just give it value i could pass in whatever my slider value is and that would set the floating value from well, zero to one let's save this off go look at it and see why that might be a problem if i jump back over to unity and I look here and I go from zero to one, that's gonna be a very, very small difference. And it's also not gonna allow me to go all the way down. Let's hit play real quick, see what that looks like, and then see how we can fix it. So here I've got the value, I can slide it up, goes to one, goes down to zero. It's relatively useless. It doesn't move the bar at all. So how can we fix it? Well, let's go back into the code. And instead of using the value, we're gonna use mathf.log10 and then pass in our value. We'll multiply that by some multiplier that'll give us a little bit of control over how fast it'll move up and down. I'm gonna name that underscore multiplier, and then we'll hit Alt Enter and generate a serialized field for it. I'm using Writer right now, which has an option to create a serialized field. If you don't have that option, just create a field up top and it'll work just fine. I'll go remove my private keyword. I'm gonna set the default value here to about 30. Found that that's a good number that I think works well. So I'm gonna save that off, jump back over to Unity and see what we get now. And it works, but we don't want our player to have to set the volume every time they open our game. So let's make it persist as well. We'll open up the volume control script and I'm gonna add an on disable. Say on disable. And in here, we'll use the player prefs to save off our setting. Say player prefs dot set float. And then we'll give it our volume parameter as the key. And then the value of our slider as the value. So I'll say underscore slider dot value. Now I can go down to my start method and say underscore slider dot value equals player prefs dot get float, not set float. And then we'll get the volume parameter. And for our default, we use underscore slider dot value so that if we don't have anything saved, we'll use whatever the value was of our slider in the editor. We'll save this off and in fact let's go back over to the editor and adjust our default value right now our, our default is set to 0 0.001 and i want to crank this up to maybe about 70 or 80 percent a 0.8 is about 80 percent volume and i think that's a good number to use we'll save this off we'll hit play and let's see if we are now saving and loading our values here we go i'm at 80 i turn it all the way down to 18 we'll stop playing we'll play again and i expect to go right back to 18. Look at that, I'm back at 18. If I clear my settings, go to edit, clear all player prefs, that'll wipe out all of my settings for my local user or my player prefs. I can hit play again, and I expect to be right back at my default of 0.8. Looking good so far. Next, we'll add a mute button so our player can easily turn the volume all the way down or back to whatever level it was at previously. To do that, I've added a toggle into our scene already, and we're just gonna hook it up in code. We'll go over to the slider, open up the script that we have on there, our volume control script, and we'll add a serialized field to reference the toggle. We'll say serialized field, toggle, and we'll give it a name of underscore toggle. We'll go back into the Unity Editor and assign that reference next. So in the Unity Editor, I should see my field appear here any second. Then we'll take the toggle and just drag it down there. Now, when we click the toggle, we want it to just slide the value all the way down to zero. And we wanna save off the value that it's at so that when we hit it again, we can go back to that value. So let's open up our volume control and make that happen. First, we'll go into our awake method and we'll add a listener to our toggle. We'll say underscore toggle dot on value change dot add listener. We'll call this handle toggle value changed. I'll hit alt enter and generate a method for it. And then I'm gonna rename the parameter to enable sound. This will be on when we have sound and off when we don't have sound. I'll get rid of the default implementation there. And then what do we wanna do? Well, let's think about it for a moment. If we enable sound, we wanna set the slider value up to something. And if we disable sound, we wanna set the slider value 
down to zero. So we'll say if enable sound, then we want to say slider dot value equals, and for now let's start with slider dot max value. This will maximize the volume all the way up. And then we'll say else slider dot value equals slider dot min value. So if we've clicked it off, we'll set it down to the minimum. If we've clicked it on, we'll set it to the maximum. We can save this off, go back into Unity, and we should have a working slider with a working mute button. Let's try it out. We'll hit play. I'll hit mute, it goes down. I hit mute again, it goes up. There are a couple of issues though. If I drag this volume up, that slider isn't changing the mute button. And if I click on this, it's always going all the way up to the top value. And even if I drag it all the way down, it doesn't show that it's turned off or muted. So let's fix those up next. When our player drags the slider, this event is called. And after we've adjusted the volume, we can simply set our toggle to on or off based on what the slider value is. If it's greater than the minimum value, the toggle should be on. And if we try that out, you can see that it works just fine. All the way down, it goes off, slide it up, and it turns on. There is one small bug with this setup right now, though, that if you're muted when you save and you start up a game and you try to adjust the volume to something other than the maximum, like I click right here, it's going to go all the way up to the full value. Now, the reason for this is that when we adjust our slider value, we call the is on change or we set is on, which then fires the handle toggle value changed and is setting enable sound to true and then maximizing our volume. Now, two things that we want to adjust here. First is that really when we enable sound, I probably don't want to go all the way up to the maximum. I probably want to go to the default value instead. But second, I don't really want to fire this off if I'm dragging the slider up. I want to set the value, but I don't want to run this code. So we'll just add a simple little check here to say that we want to disable the toggle event for now. So they underscore disable toggle event equals true. I'll add that as a field by hitting Alt Enter and creating a field. And then after we've set our toggles value, we'll say disable toggle event equals false. Now to make this actually work, I'm gonna copy the disable toggle event field name and then in our handle toggle value changed right at the beginning, we'll say if and paste that in and then return. So if we're in disable mode, we just won't call the code. Now you might be wondering, isn't there another way to do this to just disable the toggle callback. There are a couple of different ways that you can do it. They're all just a lot more involved. And this is the simple, least intrusive way that I can present it to you. You can do it however you want though, in your own situations. But this change has solved our problem and everything's working great now. Now that we have volume control, let's break it up a little bit and give ourselves music and sound effects control. To do that, we'll go under our group section, hit plus, and let's make a new group named music. Then I'll select the master group again and hit plus and make a group named sound effects or SFX. Now I'm gonna select the music, go to the volume parameter of it in the inspector, right click and expose the volume of music to script. I'll do the same for sound effects, right click, expose volume of SFX. Now I wanna rename both of these. So I'll open the exposed parameters drop down and rename the first one to music volume and the other to SFX volume. Now I'll rename my slider from slider to music slider. I'm gonna change the volume parameter from master to music volume. And then I'm gonna take the toggle and make it a child of the music slider. That way I can duplicate the slider, drag it down and make myself an SFX slider as well. So I'll rename this from music to SFX, get rid of the number there, scroll down and change this to SFX. There we go, SFX. That's all I need to do now to have separate sliders for my different mixers. Let's actually hook up two different audio sources though, so that we can hear this as we mix and match and slide them up and down. I'll select my music object and then we'll add an audio source. And I'm gonna take the awesomeness track and make that the audio clip. I'm gonna select a different output group. So I'll select the little search box and choose SFX. And then for the other group, I don't wanna use the master either. Instead, I wanna use my music. So I'm gonna go to audio mixer, I'm gonna drag music, right up onto there. I'm gonna make sure that loop is checked on awesomeness, save this off, hit play, and now I expect to be able to control both of these tracks independently. Both muted, let's drag this one up. Our music volume works. Let's try the SFX volume. And now it works. That's really all we needed. All of the code for this is gonna be available down below along with all of the art. And if you wanna make a master volume slider, you could just duplicate it or leave that other one that we already had. 
hooked up to master and it'll work just fine to control both of these together. Now, if you're not doing something like this, I highly recommend that you come up with some solution so that you give your players some volume control. Doesn't have to be this specific one, but find something so that they don't go crazy listening to crazy loud music that drives them nuts. Anyway, I appreciate you watching this video all the way to the end. I hope you don't mind hitting that thumbs up button or subscribing. Or just leave a comment and let me know what other kinds of things you want to see soon. And I want to say thanks again and goodbye. I also created a slider here, but I haven't made any other changes. Now let's make some annoying music.